so uh, that can be improved uh so what i'm looking at doing is playing uh, rhythm and chord changes over the nine uh, keynotes four sharps and four flats on either side of c major and the channel is all about uh, giving away imagery that will help with uh, learning and uh, teaching guitar that's what the ccby license does and uh, the idea is uh, to sort of help the communication between the math and the music between the science and the art. Here we go with the uh, progressions that you use to play music or songs with. Song is the big item right now. I start with the, the key of C major, 26% of pop songs are written in this key. Middle C is just about in the middle of the range of male and female voices. And its uh, key signature has no sharps or flats. So it's easiest to read. And on the piano, it's the only white keys only, so it's the easiest to play and learn. And on guitar, nothing is easy. The key uh, G major, 12% of songs uh, written here. And uh, you'll note down below that the fretboard changes with each key. Uh, that's so you can play scales uh, with uh, over those chord progressions. D major, 8% of songs. A major, 8% of songs. E major, 7% of songs. F major, the first flat key, 9%. B flat major, 5%. E flat major, 10%. And finally, A flat major with only 4%. And I've got the uh, format here showing me the basic 1, 4, 5, 6 chord progressions. Uh, and those are very basic. But that uh, it's something you want to have. And underneath it has the uh, fretboard uh, with uh, each key note with the, for each key. And we'll see how this goes. I made this a long time ago, just photocopy. This is all before the internet. A long time ago, I made this, and then I never really got into it. And I expect to get back uh, to this stuff uh, a little later on. But right now, its priority is low. I'm more interested in getting basic songwriting down. And these things, uh, for the same reason that I, I just located them uh, now, if you learn theory but you don't use it, it just sort of falls uh, by the wayside there. I think it's the same as uh, with math. You don't want to learn more theory or more math than you can use. So I don't want to go into that right now. Is Romero is mostly more like this. They use a rascada. And they use a straighter wrist. It's not a pure rascada either. The, the flamencos, they, they say that's not real flamenco. But it's a rascada for a classical guitar, more or less. But the Segovia did a more of a bent wrist kind of a thing, like this. And uh, the Romeros did more of a straight wrist. And uh, the detail, we spent a lot of time on that. You have to, to change your technique once you develop it is a very... Uh, time consuming uh, very difficult actually but now I'm looking at more of a popular technique so all these things are gonna go there's a lot of good uh, good ideas uh, I've used them I've studied them time to go time to uh, develop my own here's the sharp keynotes and the flat keynotes and there's only two principal scale patterns I'm using for the fifth string, I'm using the first Segovia scale. A couple of reasons. First, it uh, it's easier on my left hand thumb, and which is always the weakest part of my plan. Second, I'll be at least getting some use out of the Segovia scales. Third, it was uh, it uses all four fingers, which is good. And fourth, it's a good shift along the neck. Looks like this. For the sixth string keynotes, I'll start with this uh, four fret box pattern. It's two octaves right across the neck. And uh, these two patterns should give me most of the vocal range and help me to learn the neck. And now there'll be other scale patterns that go up and down the neck and uh, that use three fingers and a thumb hooked over the neck. Uh, it's good for certain styles. But I'm not going for lead uh, rock guitar virtuosity. And uh, this might help me get some uh, fun out of old school songwriting. 
Here is a, another scale from the sixth string with a shift in it. And here's something for the uh, classical guitar with uh, 19 frets and a full body. It's hard to reach into this area. It's good exercise. And sometimes I just do these four notes. Here's the key of G major again. And I just want to show you that the uh, fretboard itself changes with each, with each key. So that uh, you can make up your own uh, scales. Here's the open uh, string and here's the old one I showed you before. Now there are a couple of uh, variations I'm trying out. I'm not certain what chord progressions I'm actually using. But the whole purpose is to write songs with a three or four chord progression uh, that uh, are in the most common progression for uh, publishing songs these days. I got some bar chords in here and I think you're going to want to do them as soon as possible. But it takes like a couple of months usually to do these things. Uh, you got to have strength. And uh, so you start out, you grip them like this and you play. And usually they sound about like that, not too good. The way I understand it uh, from somebody on the web, he said, just uh, hold it down for uh, two seconds, let it go, relax. Uh, relax for about five seconds and do it again. Relax, do it again, until you do them, and uh, you just build up strength, and it takes, uh, takes a while. Like Here's another thing, uh, you take a handkerchief or something, and you put it down here, do, 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 and you muffle the strength, because this is all very noisy, you're not trying to make music, you're trying to build up strength. Another thing is, uh, you go a little bit more on the side of the finger, and uh, it's a very good character building kind of a thing, this guitar. Because it looks like you can't do it. You feel like you cannot possibly do what you're seeing, what you're being told to do. And uh, if you do uh, do the uh, daily exercises, and most of the time it's like do 15 minutes a day for uh, the first uh, couple of weeks, uh, maybe maybe more than that, and I'm a little bit after. But you don't do very much. You just got to do it every day. You got to say, and you got to have that focus that I'm going to get this done. Um, Mark Knopfler had a good thing you said. You're going to really have to want to do it because your fingers are not going to want to do it. It takes a while. Uh, anyway, so you can put a little bit more on the side of the finger. Eventually, you need to build up strength, and then what you want is a full rhythm from all the strings. Okay, and uh, each bar chord will be different. Each place on the on the neck will be different, and uh, it takes a while. Now for the uh, minor keys, I'm just going to do a one, four, five. Uh, but this uh, can get uh, pretty involved. Uh, I watched uh, Rick Beato do some uh, some detailed study of it, and uh, it would take quite a bit of uh, work for me to work up something on this. Here's a few ideas that I've worked out. But it's going to involve modulation, uh, chord construction, naming chords by degree and by function. A lot of work, uh, more than uh, my Songwriting 101 course here. So uh, we'll leave this for now. I'm more interested in rhythm right now. Here is a variation of the four chord progression based on the circle of fifths. It's the simplest I could come up with. It'll start me on the rhythm, and it's a good demonstration of the math, which I'll show later on. It's a simple shift along the neck. It only requires one finger to lift up for the minor chord. The uh, bass strings are not involved at all, and all the chords are in root position. For a major chord like this, you got four fingers down. To play the minor chord, you lift up the fourth finger, and that's it. So, uh, what's with the uh, handkerchief there, Bob? Uh, does your guitar have a cold? Well, no, you just, uh, before you make music, you make noise. So, in order to prevent that or lessen that noise, you uh, take those uh, bass strings, which you don't need, out of the action by putting my muffling them with this handkerchief. You put this through here, 
That goes right after the third uh, string down there, takes all the bass strings out of the action now. Here's a variation I had done first from G major back to C major. Oh, maybe that won't make it a top 10 list today, but I like it, and really, what else really counts? And you can do two chords at a time until you get them down. I had gotten that idea from a country songwriter who come up and uh, sat down with me for a little bit at a park. Uh, when you get those down pretty good, then you go on to the next two chords. Okay, next involves the shift to the uh, G minor. That involves picking up the fourth finger like I showed before. And the second finger has been down there all this time, but it doesn't show up on the chord diagram until it's needed. And next, you got to come back to the tonic. It's a tonal music. You resolve it by getting back to the, uh, the one chord. And I'll uh, show it to you, and then I'll show you how I am going to be practicing it. Now, the idea is to practice the most difficult chord change as many times as possible in one minute. And I had used an online uh, calc uh, countdown timer here. But I had to cut it out of the picture because of copyright reasons. One, two, three, four, five. And that gets done several times a day till it's clean and playable. Uh, it takes time, uh, days and weeks, and uh, you don't do it till exhaustion. You don't want any injuries. The idea of timing the changes I got from Justin Guitar, I think it's better than starting out with a metronome because the focus is on a clean sound. Later on, you can use a metronome with uh, various speeds to get your adaptability in order. <laughs> Here's a basic box pattern scale I'm going to use when I got all, uh, all six strings available to do it. And I'll play this over the uh, chord progression, record the progression, then play over it to see see what I can uh, come up with. <laughs> 